So if you remember, we said that if you want to differentiate something plus another thing, that's fine. You just differentiate those things separately. But if we want to differentiate something multiplied by something else, that's a bit more complicated. It can be done, and we need a rule to do it. The rule is not on the formula sheet, and we stated the rule yesterday, so that's in the video for yesterday. But it's basically this. You take the two things that are being multiplied, and you differentiate them both. So 2x plus 3, when you differentiate it, just becomes 2. That's year one differentiation, nothing new there at all. Uh, this you can multiply out, x squared minus 4x plus 4, and differentiate that. Or you can use the chain rule. When you differentiate that, you get 1. So you end up with... Which you'll notice are not multiplying out. Uh, and then the product rule says that the whole thing differentiated is what you get by multiplying those two things together added to what you get by multiplying those two things together. And this is where we got to at the end of the last lesson. So we had 2 times x minus 2 multiplied by 2x plus 3 plus 2 lots of, two, of um, x minus 2 squared. And we're looking for stationary points, turning points, so we're asking when does that equal zero? And when we want to know when something equals zero, very often it involves factorising. That's certainly how we solve quadratics, or one of the ways we solve quadratics. And I can factorise this expression as well, although it looks different. And when you do this, you might be thinking, are you sure you can do that? You can. Both of these expressions, this here and this here, have a couple of things in common. They both got a 2 and an x minus 2. They've both got it. Look, there, 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 there. That's got a couple of them, but it's definitely got one. So I'm going to factorise this by pulling that out of both of these expressions. What am I left with? Well, this is what we do at, yeah, I've just done it with my year sevens. You know, what do I need to multiply that by to turn it into that? Well, I need to multiply it by 2x plus 3. And what do I need to multiply that by to make it into that? Well, I need another. But these, here's the neat thing. I've overcomplicated this. I don't need those brackets, though. So what I end up with is... Three x plus one, and that step going from there to there to there, I find myself asking, "Oh, you know, am I allowed to do that?" And the answer is yes, you can. Yeah, and it really tidies it up nicely for us, doesn't it? It's because, and this so often happens with the product rule, we've got quite a lot in common in both expressions. So I pull out what's in common and ask what's left and then I can combine what this has got in common with what this has got in common. Uh, and so this is just like a normal you know, GCSE um, quadratic. This will equal 0 when x is 2 and when that equals minus 1, so that's when x is minus a third. And then I can go back and substitute that into my um, original function to get the y values, which we won't do now, but well done if you had already managed to do that. So do you just ignore the 2 on the outside? So, well, yes, because don't forget, the first thing I could do is divide everything by 2. When I'm asking when does it equal 0, 0 is my friend, isn't it? So I can divide by, divide by 2, uh, just leaving me with, with that. Now, because you could have 
not applied that out, not applied that out, and rolled it into one big quadratic, and you would have got the same answer. So if you did that, you could use your calculator to solve it, you could still have got the same answer. So, you know, all is not lost if that thing leaves you a little bit cold. Um, but, uh, yeah, that to that, I think, is a really neat trick. And factorising, when you've used the product rule, is, is, is something that crops up quite a lot. So I'm just going to, we're going to just very quickly dip our toe into a question from the mixed exercise. Um, so we're just going to do part A of this question, which in itself is a six mark question. Uh, this is on uh, page 265, because some of you may think, oh, that's worth having a go at, page 265. But we're only going to do part A for now. Set up the windows. I don't know how far you got through my videos. I'm going to have to get through them. Okay, so for example, we learnt last week that when you differentiate e to the 2x, you get e to the 2x multiplied by what you get when you differentiate that. So that's, two. So that's in Friday's video, which is called chain rule 2. And here, sine, when you differentiate it, becomes cos. So sine 2x becomes cos 2x multiplied by what you get when you differentiate that. And so now, See if you can write down what you get. That times that, not uh, added, sorry, to that times that. And because we're looking for turning points, we're going to ask when it equals zero. So again, there's going to be a bit of factorising going on, slightly different this time. We're only doing part A, I mean, you, you may feel you want to dip in further, but it's not to do anything.
the order in which you write your answer to the product rule doesn't really matter, does it? But if I'm doing 2 cos 2x times e to the 2x, I'm, I want to write it like that. e to the 2x, 2 cos 2x would just look a bit weird. It's the right answer still. But it also means that I, it sort of accentuates how this and this are so very similar. I can factorise by pulling out what they've both got in common. So Isabel, what's going to go in the bracket? Sine 2x plus cos 2x. Fantastic. And we have good news because um, zero is your friend, so you can divide by uh, two. Um, and you can even divide by e to the two x. The, the, e to the x never equals zero. That's e to the x. So e to the two x would just be that sort of squeezed in a little bit never equals zero, so there's no way this can equal zero, so we're not going to get any solutions from here, or you can just say, well, I'll divide by e to the 2x, I can do that, because it never equals zero. So we end up with just the question, our turning points will be when the bracket equals zero. And this is an expression involving sine and cos, so James, I'm going to combine this. What, what, am I, what do you think I'm going to end up with here if I've got a, que a question with a sine and a cos in it? Something to do with tan. Yeah, yeah, something to do with tan. So I'm going to take cos 2x from both sides and then divide by cos 2x. I can do that because it gives me an equation with tan in it and the places where cos is zero, tan isn't defined. That gives me minus one there if I do that though. Run out of space, so I'm going to go up here. So I'm looking for where tan 2x equals minus one. X is between naught and pi, so I need to look as far as two pi. So you're going to do shift tan of minus one to get your solution. And then don't forget with tan, it's really easy because you get solutions every 180 degrees which is every pi radians. So you're just going to add pi, and then, if you can, add pi again. Stop when you get as far as 2 pi. So your first solution is negative, it's minus a quarter pi, isn't it? So when you add pi to that, you get three quarters of pi. Um, and then you divide that by two, because that's your two x solution, you get three eighths uh, of pi. And then add pi again to three quarters, you get seven quarters, which that's a two x solution. So when you halve it, you get seven eighths. Um, if, if you had time to go on and work out the y values, well done, but I mean that would just be typing an easy calculator, don't worry about that bit.
So yeah, so we do shift tan of minus one, we get minus a quarter of pi. So add pi to that gives you three quarters of pi. Add pi to that gives you seven quarters of pi. Adding pi again would take me above two lots of pi. And then I just halve all of those answers. That's not valid, that's outside the range of values. So half of that is three pi over eight and half of the bottom one is seven pi over eight. Now, you know, it's, it's I, I know you've probably got trig on your mind at the moment. Oh, well, I suppose this is trig, but you know, you've got Friday's assessment in your mind. But it's quite interesting. You know, if we then wanted to differentiate this again, which is what the rest of this question is talking about, we'd have to do it as two separate product rules. You've got a product rule here and a product rule here. But the good news is that this we've already differentiated, haven't we? Well, we've differentiated that, because that's what we've just, you know, that's what we've just done. So we've sort of done half of it, so the answer to that will be two lots of this. It's a sort of a recursive thing. I nearly said incestuous, you know, it's, it's, you know, the answer to what you're going to differentiate that is that, times by two, because it's two lots, whereas we only have one lot. So you just have to do the product all there. Anyway, don't, don't worry about that at the moment. Um, so that's, that's quite a good question if you wanted something quite meaty to get your teeth into. Okay, so product rule often involves factorising, which particularly when we're being asked to find turning points, because we ask when does it equal zero. Um, there are some questions where we are asked to differentiate something which is made up of three terms multiplied together. So for example, um, So this is three terms multiplied together. Something here, multiplied by something here, multiplied by something here. And the way we approach it is like we approach multiplying out three brackets. So we start with the first two. So what we're going to do firstly is sort of ignore the fact that we've got that there. We're just going to do that. Okay? So I'm going to do that to one side. So let's use the product rule to differentiate that. Differentiate e to the x is the easiest thing of all, George, because it just stays as e to the x. And the sine x becomes cos x.
Have I made a mistake? No. No, no, sorry. Um, I, uh, it's funny, isn't it? My, my first assumption is that I've, I've got something wrong. But so um, so I've, I've differentiated, I've, I'm going to resist the temptation to factorise at the moment. I mean, I, it, it's easily factorised, isn't it? Um, I'm just going to leave it there for a minute. Okay, so what we now do is we think, oh, hang on a minute, it's like that. So what we now say is, right, okay, I'm going to window this, but I'm going to window it like this. So I'm going to say that's my first thing, and this is my second thing. And what we normally do when we window it is we put what you get when you differentiate this down here. Hopefully you can do that. And what you get when you differentiate that down here. Well, I know what you get when you differentiate that. I've just done it over here. So I'm going to put that answer in here. Cos becomes minus sine. And, and then I'm going to do the whole product rule thing again. And I'll, I'll then try and factorise right at the end. If I factorised early, it might have messed things up a little bit. That's how it sort of simplifies. I haven't factorised it yet. 
So I, I did this times this, and I multiplied both things separately by cos. So you could have written it differently, and you know, we, we may end up with the same answer. Um, so I got e to the x sine x times cos, and e to the x cos x times cos, which gives me cos squared x. And then here, I've got a minus, and sine times sine, sine squared, so that gives me that. Now, now I'm going to look at what I can pull out. And um, and if you you know you you're all primed and ready for Friday, you might think, hey, a minute, this. Feel a little bit of familiarity here, because this is actually cos 2x, isn't it? Cos squared minus sine squared is cos 2x. And this is a half of sine 2x. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x, so this is a half of that. Um, which maybe suggests that there's a you know there's another way of going about this. And I don't know if any of you spotted right at the beginning, I could have written that question as, we're not going to do it this way, but I could have written that question like this. Because this is a half of sine 2x. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. Tomorrow I'm going to give you a chance to fill in your I love trig sheets, unless Harry and Pat arrive today, in which case we might do it today. Um, so um, so you, know, you, you won't have to remember those things, but I will expect you to, to sort of do it from scratch using the formula sheet in that 10 minutes tomorrow. Um, so you could have just done it as a single product rule, because I can differentiate a half of sine 2x. That becomes a half of cos 2x multiplied by what you get when you differentiate that, which is... So you can probably see where it's all going to go. Anyway, that was a, that's that one. And actually, don't automatically think when you see three things that it's a triple product rule. This question comes from the practice questions that um, uh, the example would produce. And it looks like another triple product rule. And you could do it. You could do it using triple product rule, like we just did. You could do this times this over here and then put that in. But actually, it seems to me that this is quite easy to multiply out. And I can differentiate that. I don't need any special rule for that. That's, you know, year one. That's 2x minus 3x squared. So go on, have a go at that one. The only tricky thing I think about this question is the way they want the answer written. So they want you to differentiate but they want you to write it in this form where f of x is a cubic. Have a go. So this isn't a double, well, you could do it, but it's probably best not to done as a double product rule. It's best done as a single product rule. In one side of the window, you're going to have x squared minus x cubed.
So I can use the product rule with anything that's made up of you know, an expression, however complicated that expression is, multiplied by another expression. I'm going to dig my heels in here and say I think it's silly to have something and then the e to the minus 2x after it, so I'm going to write it before it, forgive me. So the first term is that. And then I've got minus 2. Now this two causes me a little bit of grief because they want it written like that. So I'm gonna check, that, that term's okay. I'm gonna leave that term as it is for now. Uh, and, and also the fact it's um, minus. So here's what I'm gonna do, and it, this is gonna look a bit odd. I'm only having to do this because of what they're asking me to do. So that's going to give me And then I'm going to do what we did in that first example of factorising. I've, I've got this times this, and then the same thing times this, so I can write that like this. And I can do that, okay? I can go from there to there because I'm pulling out the same thing. So what do I do to that? Turn it into that, you multiply by 2x minus 3x squared. What do I do to this to turn it into that? You multiply by that. I can therefore combine those two, so finally I've got my answer. I've got 3x, sorry, 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x. So f of x is that cubic. this for a little bit longer. Um, I just need to do a couple of examples from the book. I know this is very rare that we stop and do a bit of practice.
<laughs> it's the it's the far stall is a door that you open out. It's the yeah, wider access one. But sometimes the door gets popped in. <laughs> so you can't actually and the door doesn't go that way and she can't get over that way so she doesn't. So <laughs> I had to I had to I had to um I had to sort of prize it open once and uh, <laughs> well, there was, she was doing a little bit more than knocking when I went. She was screaming and. <laughs> <laughs> so, George, in the first chain rule video, we we learned about differentiating that. Yeah. So x cubed, when I differentiate, it gives me three x squared multiplied by the power reduced to the power by one. We do a very similar thing here. We multiply by the power. Reduce the power by one. The extra bit is that because this isn't just x, we then multiply by what we get when we differentiate that, which is five. So we actually get three times five, fifteen lots of that. That's called the chain rule. Again, the, the order is, you know, funny, isn't it? But it just seems to make sense to me to do the 15 times the 3. But now I'm at that factorising stage, so you've got to think, what have these things got in common? Just, just to finish this one off, what have these two things got in common? Well, they both can be divided by three. They've both got at least one x, and they've both got at least five x minus three squared. That's what they've got in common. So then I'm gonna say, right, what do I need to multiply that by to make that, well I need another 5x minus 3 and I need a 2, so it's got to look like this. I'll come back to that in a minute. And then what do I need to multiply this by to make this? Well I need a 15 and I need an x.
and you know you get that feeling of proof relief because you've got this so we know that a is 3 and n is 2 so now I've just got to sort out that final bracket so I've got two lots of 5x which is 10x plus 15x and two lots of minus 3 so b is uh, c minus 6 so again we've got that factorising sort of step, this time not in the context of a turning point, just in the context of a showdown. Mercifully, in this one, there's no simplifying asked for, so whatever we get is our answer. We just need to substitute two into it. Yeah, I mean, I know that they've factorised their answer, didn't have to in that case. Um, the trouble with typing that into your calculator, I suspect your calculator would have given you a decimal value. So, um, best to leave it, oh, hang on, I'm sorry, it's um, 
but x is 2, so that's e to the power of best to leave it in terms of e. So uh, when x is 2, that's 5, so that's 10 e to the power of 6. Uh, that's 25 times by 3 is 75 e to the power of 6. 10 lots of e to the power of 6 plus 75 e to the power of 6 is 85 e to the power of 6.